Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. Trump impeachment trial to continue after passing constitutionality vote in U.S. Senate. Over 28 garment workers killed in the flooding of a legal workshop in Morocco. Media organizations condemn raid on progressive news portal NewsClick by Indian government. Haitian opposition appoints interim president as anti-Moises protests intensify. For our first story, we take you to the U.S., where the opening arguments in the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump will be presented in the U.S. Senate on February 10th. The trial continues after the Senate approved its constitutional validity with a major vote of 56 to 44 on February 9th. Trump's defense team had argued that it would be unconstitutional to put a former president on trial for impeachment. The Democrats have stated that Trump must be held accountable for the actions he committed while still in office. The House of Representatives had impeached Trump on the single count of incitement to insurrection on January 13th. The article of impeachment pointed to Trump's unsubstantiated claims of electoral fraud and the speech he made on January 6th, just before a mob of his supporters stormed the Capitol building. Trump's lawyers have argued that he was exercising his First Amendment rights to free speech. The trial in the Senate will determine if Trump is to be convicted of the impeachment charge. The House has appointed nine impeachment managers who will serve as prosecutors in the trial. Starting today, the managers and Trump's defense team will each have 16 hours to present their case. The Senate will have four hours to pose questions to each side, followed by four hours of closing arguments. Proceedings are expected to continue over several days with a vote on Trump's conviction expected early next week. The vote will require a two-thirds majority to pass in the Senate. This will require at least 17 Republicans to cross party lines and vote in favor with the Democrats. For our next story, we go to Morocco, where over 24 workers were killed after an illegal textile workshop in Tangiers was flooded on February 8th. The flooding was caused by heavy rains and led to a short circuit in the workshop located in the basement of a residential villa. A majority of the workers killed were women between the ages of 20 and 40 years old. While the total extent of casualties is as yet unconfirmed, at least 10 workers were wounded in Monday's incident. A majority of workers in Morocco are forced to work in unsafe conditions due to government corruption and inadequate safety legislations. As reported by Al Jazeera Morocco, it has one of the highest rates of work-related accidents in the Middle East region every year. Critics have also pointed to the failures of private contractors in maintaining drainage and sanitation systems in the country. Local media reported that at least four people had died due to similar flooding in Casablanca. The search for survivors in Tangiers is still underway. In the meantime, local authorities have opened an investigation into the matter. Organizations such as the left-wing Democratic Way Party have issued statements condemning the incident. A statement by Democratic Way condemned the government complicity in the violation co of labor codes in the country. The Moroccan Association for Human Rights has also demanded the dismissal of the governor of the Tangiers Tetuan al Husseima region. Government authorities in India have been conducting a raid on the offices of NewsClick in the capital of Delhi since February 9th. NewsClick is a progressive online news portal which has consistently amplified voices from the front lines of the ongoing farmers' protests. The raid has come at a time when critical voices in the media have increasingly become targets of serious criminal charges, including sedition. The raid is being conducted by the Enforcement Directorate, which is an intelligence agency under the Ministry of Finance. Media reports quoted the agency alleging that the raid was conducted in relation to a money laundering case. The residences of NewsClick's chief editor and head of the human resources have also been raided. Domestic and international news organizations have expressed solidarity with NewsClick and have denounced the raid. Many have noted the growing threats to press freedom in India under the far-right BJP-led government of India. As the raid extended over 30 hours, the president of the All India's Farmers Association condemned the attempt to, quote, penalize NewsClick for standing firmly with the fighting people. The Communist Party of India Marxists has also demanded an end to the vindictive action as an attempt to suppress the independent news portal. NewsClick released a brief statement on February 9th, which read, quote, truth shall prevail. We have full faith in the legal system. This was followed by a longer statement by the editorial team 
published today stating that NewsClick has nothing to hide and will continue to cooperate with the officials. The statement also reaffirms the organization's commitment to the unheard and unseen voices of those struggling to build a life of dignity and well-being across the world. For our final story, we go to Haiti, where protests against the contested presidential term of Jovenel Moise have intensified. Opposition parties have also appointed Supreme Court Judge Joseph Messene Jean Luis to serve as interim president. There is also a plan to set up a transitional government for two years and to organize a fresh round of general elections. Here is a video feature on the current situation in Haiti. Protests in Haiti have intensified as Jovenel Moise, in violation of the country's constitution, has refused to step down. Opposition political parties and social organizations have been mobilizing in the country since early January against moves by the president to extend his time in office. According to the opposition, Moise's mandate as president ended on February 7, 2021. They argue that Article 134-2 of the Constitution provides for an early start of a new presidential term if there were irregularities in the electoral process. This claim was backed up by Haiti's Superior Council of the Judiciary, which on February 7 announced the official end of Moise's presidential term and expressed concerns about the serious threats resulting from a lack of a political agreement regarding the presidential mandate's expiration. The Federation of Haitian Lawyers also issued a resolution on February 1st declaring that Moise's mandate was set to expire on February 7, 2021. However, Moise, who is backed by the country's armed forces, the United States government, the European Union, and the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, has refused to step down. On Sunday, the day his mandate was set to end, Moise stated in a video address, I have 364 days left in power. There will be no transition. He has argued that an interim government occupied the first year of his five-year term. Despite this, the opposition remains adamant. Massive protests were carried out on February 7th and have continued till today. These have been met with violent repression by Haitian security forces while major cities in the country have been militarized. Reports state that police attacked several journalists throughout the protests. On February 8th, Haitian opposition political parties and social organizations declared that the term of the president, Jovenel Moise, ended on February 7th and appointed Supreme Court Judge Joseph Messene Jean-Louis as the interim president. This came right after the president alleged that there was a coup attempt on Sunday to install another Supreme Court judge as the president. 23 people were arrested in relation to this, including the Supreme Court judge and a senior police official. Moise also issued a decree dismissing three Supreme Court judges. The repression and persecution of Haiti's opposition has been widely condemned. Lawyer André Michel, leader of the opposition Democratic and Popular Sector Party, denounced the illegal arrests as a true systematic repression and said that democracy is threatened and the rule of law is endangering the country. Michel called on the citizens to continue demonstrating against Moise until he and his far-right Haitian Tetkel party leave office. Haitian democracy has long been under threat under the watchful eye and support of the United States government. Since January 2020, Moise has been ruling by presidential decree as the mandates of the members of parliament expired without legislative elections being held. They were scheduled for October 2019, but were postponed due to a wave of anti-government protests. Haiti currently only has 11 elected officials in office. Protests are set to continue in Haiti as Moise sends the country deeper into crisis. Existing concerns of citizens over increasing corruption, hunger, inequality, poverty, and violence have brought the population to the brink, and they demand immediate changes. Thanks for watching People's Dispatch and follow us at our website, peoplesdispatch.org.